I'm out here um, for my friend Stella's birthday. We're doing a quick overnighter in the Los Angeles National Forest. And I'm also doing a separate video from this video on the budget gear that I'm using that I purchased at Amazon, which is really cool. So I'm excited to share that video. Um, but I also just wanted to film the intro to this video for um, my gear that I use on the Pacific Crest Trail. And I know some of you guys already know that my gear was stolen in Tacoma, Washington when I was hiking the trail and I had to stop because my stuff was stolen, but I still wanted to put together a video just showing what I use. So that's what you're about to see right now. I used the Hyperlite Southwest 55 backpack and I did make a few modifications to it by adding some stretch cord to mount my sleeping pad and I also added a shoulder pouch by z packs i really like the daisy chains on the shoulder pouches as you can see here i used it to mount my garmin in reach mini this backpack is a 55 liter of internal volume with an additional 9.8 external volume with all the outer pockets it's a 40 pound load capacity and it's very durable and very comfortable and it's definitely a backpack that i'm going to buy again i went with the hyperlite unbound two person tent it's a three season tent it's also a non freestanding tent so it does require trekking poles that are not included to pitch the tent i was deciding between this version the unbound two person the z pax duplex and the durston tent and in the end i did end up going with this unbound two person tent because it had all the features in one tent that i was looking for including the zipper closure on the vestibule doors um, I am having an issue though with the zipper right now, but I think it could be an easy fix with some wax on the zipper. But other than that, I really love the tent and I am so happy that I still have it. <laughs> I had a combination of the z pack 6 inch ultralight titanium tent stakes with the MSR groundhog stakes because um, the terrain changes all the time and you just never know what it's going to be like. So I like having both just in case. In this clip, you'll see I have my Tyvek footprint on the outside of my pack, and eventually I do end up packing it in my backpack with the tent. But I highly recommend using a footprint underneath the floor of your tent because I didn't use it a couple of times and I did manage to somehow get a hole. So using a Tyvek footprint is definitely recommended. On trail, one of my absolute favorite pieces of gear was the enlightened equipment enigma quilt and i'm <laughs> i definitely want to get another one someday in the future um i went with the 9 950 fill power zero degree regular wide quilt it does come with the uh straps so that you could um, attach it to your sleeping pad and i highly recommend using those straps and learning how to um to attach them correctly onto your sleeping pad because it just ensures that you don't have any drafts when you're using the quilt and it's so warm you definitely don't need the booties when you have a zero degree quilt with the closed foot box i love this and i'm gonna get another one in this video clip i'm using the thermarest neo air x therm nxt sleeping pad this was the second sleeping pad by thermarest that i had to buy on trail when i first started the Pacific Crest Trail, I was using a pad that I had purchased a couple of years ago. I think it was the very first um, sleeping pad that had the 7.3 R value rating. Um, but they it doesn't look like it's on the market anymore. That sleeping pad that I used um, ended up having valve issues and not working anymore by the time I got to Julian. So after Julian, I had to upgrade to this sleeping pad in the wide version and it's amazing and it's very warm and I highly recommend that also. This is a sleeping pad that I carried when I first started the trail. Uh, the idea here was to have something really small and packable to sit on for lunch or even to lay out on for a break. I also wanted to use this underneath my sleeping pad to prevent it from slipping because I noticed when I was testing out my sleeping pad with the tent that the sleeping pad would slip around a lot and just to prevent that, I thought I would use this sleeping pad from Superior Wilderness Designs. It works great, but I did end up sending it home in the end. And the reason why I sent home the Superior Wilderness Designs sleeping pad was because I wanted something a little bit thicker and warmer to go underneath my inflatable sleeping pad. 
when I was using the um, Superior Wilderness Designs foam with the very first sleep, uh, inflatable sleeping pad that I had, I noticed that when I would lose air in that sleeping pad and my hips would hit the floor, I was very cold. So that's the reason why I wanted to upgrade to the Nemo Switchback to go underneath my inflatable sleeping pad, the newer one, just in case anything was to happen. I'm definitely one of those people that needs to sleep with an inflatable pillow while backpacking. I have done a couple of backpacking trips before even being on the PCT where I did try to use a stuff sack in some of my clothes as a pillow, but I just really needed that extra lift, especially because I'm a side sleeper and I have um, broad shoulders, so I needed that extra lift so that I my head could be you know, straight on with my spine, um, and, you know, and not just be like lowered to the ground and be really uncomfortable. So I ended up going with this Sea to Summit Arrows premium pillow and I absolutely loved it and I'm probably going to buy another one and it was really light so it didn't take up too much space or weight. So the Hyperlite Southwest 55 is listed as water resistant and not waterproof so that's the reason why I decided to go with a Nyloflume pack liner which was really cheap and it's really light it weighs almost nothing so I thought it wouldn't hurt being a first week March starter of the PCT with lots of freezing rain and snow thought it would be a great idea just to have this as extra security to ensure that my gear was never wet. To my backpack, I added the Z-Pax shoulder pouch, um, which just carried a 16-ounce bottle that I used to mix my electrolytes in. It's made of DCF fabric, and it also has an outer mesh pocket, so it's kind of like two shoulder pockets in one, and I really love this shoulder pouch, and I'm probably going to buy it again. I enjoyed using my sun umbrella. There were a lot of people on trail that told me that I wasn't going to need it at all or that I was going to send it home at some point, but I really did enjoy using it to have um, shade from the sun. And also, you know, when it was raining, I really liked having the umbrella. But not only that, when I was camping um, in the tent, especially on days when it was raining outside, I noticed that I would get a lot more condensation than usual than if it was dry outside. So in this clip that I showed in my first video, a lot of people didn't understand what I was doing, but basically it was raining outside and it was really cold, which meant I was going to get a lot more condensation inside. So I just put that right over my head because when the wind would hit the walls of my tent, the condensation would hit my face and it would be unpleasant to sleep through that. So I just used this as a block, but then noticed that using the umbrella in this way actually prevented a lot of the condensation considerably. Like the amount of condensation I was getting was reduced, which was pretty awesome. So I ended up using it a lot more during the night, even when it wasn't raining, just to reduce condensation. And I also noticed that it helped me sleep really well because it made it like a little dark nook that I could sleep in and I loved it. The trekking poles I used were by Black Diamond, the Alpine Carbon Cork. These are some trekking poles that I purchased maybe three years before my Pacific Crest Trail attempt, but I purchased them specifically to do the PCT, so that's how long I've been trying to gather all of the gear for this. I was totally bummed when these were stolen, but a friend of mine actually found a pair on eBay and ordered them for me and had them shipped to me because they don't make them in black and white anymore, so that was awesome. Happy about that. I used the Ice Axe by Black Diamond. It's the Raven in 60 centimeters. Sometimes I use it as an extra large stake for my tent on those really windy days, which I don't recommend, but it helped some some days it really helped. I also used the Black Diamond Slider um, Ice Axe Leash, which worked really well. I only had to deploy my Ice Axe around the Big Bear area and having this leash was just extra security in case I fell and dropped my ice axe. For traction, I'm using the Catula Micro Spikes. Um, in this section in the clip, it doesn't show any snow, but um, this was around the Mount Baden Powell area and coming down there was a lot of snow, but in these clips, I just didn't want to bother taking them off. But the Catula Micro Spikes work perfectly. They got me up and down the Mount Baden Powell area. They also got me through the San Jacinto area and as well as the Big Bear area. Um, so I did carry the Catula K10s, but I think 
around right wood I decided that I didn't need them so I ended up sending them home um it just, it didn't seem like the snow was bad enough for me to carry the K10s. Um, and I know a lot of people that I was speaking with um, were just using micro spikes because by the time I got to certain snow areas, it wasn't as bad as it had been. Um, so I just went with the micro spikes and they worked perfectly well. But if I was to go through the Sierra, I probably would carry the K10s. Um, I also have this Catula carrying case for the K10s because they're sharp. And they also have this little loop so that you could carry these on the outside of your pack, which I would probably recommend because the sharp um, ends or the sharp spikes of the Catula K10s could probably puncture some things that you don't want punctured, like for instance, a sleeping pad. So the carrying case is well worth it. Being an early March starter, I was always concerned about the cold weather and I really didn't want to be cold in any situation. So I carried this pair of gloves, but to be honest, I didn't really use them. A lot of the times it wasn't that cold to where I would need these gloves. Maybe in sections where like Mount Baden Powell where I was actually climbing on hands and knees was probably the only time that I used them. But other than that, I didn't really need them. I carried these Outdoor Research Gore-Tex Gators in certain areas where there was snow and these worked out very well for me. I highly recommend these for high snow. As mentioned in one of my videos, one of the things that wasn't stolen was my electronics bag. I liked carrying all my electronics in this waterproof roll top case. It's listed online as a toiletry case, but I just wanted to use it for my electronics because it was waterproof and lightweight. Um, so I definitely would recommend this product. Before the Pacific Crest Trail, I purchased the Garmin InReach Mini, the first edition. This is not the Mini 2. Um, and then I just ended up carrying it on the Pacific Crest Trail for two-way communication between me and other hikers and also to have the ability to call for SOS if I needed to do that. Um, I did notice on trail there were a lot of people carrying these, but they didn't exactly know how to use them. So I do highly recommend if you're going to buy one to do some research because they have awesome capabilities. I carried the Nightcore 20,000 milliamp power bank on trail, mostly because I had additional electronics like my camera gear. Um, so I did use that to charge all of my electronics. There was some times when I would completely run out of battery, but most of the time this lasted all the way through a stretch. I also carried this four port USB charger, but I wouldn't recommend this. There are better on the market, for instance, the Anchor portable chargers. Um, I also carried this lightning charge cable. This worked out really well for my iPhone. And I also carried the Nightcore uh, rechargeable headlamp, which is pretty popular uh, throughout the through hiking world. And nowadays they sell them with this stretch cord, um, which would make the headlamp lighter. Um, but this product is really nice and I recommend it. I also carried an extra battery for my Sony A6400 camera, as well as the Apple to Lightning SD card reader for editing on the go, and the original charger for my camera. I used the Superior Wilderness Designs roll top lunch box as my food bag. I really liked um, that this is a waterproof bag because it is made out of DCF fabric and the seams are fully taped, making this complete system fully waterproof. That means that you could potentially use this as your food bag um, to store a quilt or to store your clothes and to ensure that those things will always remain dry, which I like. <laughs> I like you know, inside of the pack, keeping a lot of my things dry and out of any type of, you know, rain and things like that. So this was a perfect choice for me. And I do miss this bag. I'm probably going to buy another one. And I did bare bag it, hang it once, and it worked out perfectly fine. So I definitely recommend this product also. I carried this GSI Outdoors boiler pot on trail. It's one that I had before I started the Pacific Crest Trail and there are definitely smaller ones on the market but I didn't want to have to spend extra for the trail. And I also carried the Jetboil uh, fuel um, 
on trail those worked out really well for me as and I also carried the MSR pocket rocket too so this entire setup that I had was something I purchased before the PCT and I just figured you know I already have a cook system and it works it is a little bit big it's a little heavy compared to other things on the market but I didn't want to have to spend extra especially if I already had something I carried this Sea to Summit Cool Grip X mug which is a collapsible mug that I usually only used for making my granola in the morning and it worked out perfectly for me. I also used the Sea to Summit long handle titanium spork and the spork came in handy for me because most of the time I was eating ramen on the trail so this worked out great. I ended up getting this GSI outdoors food scraper towards the end of my hike and it ended up working great and I wish I had started with it from the beginning. For water collecting, I went with the Canuck Vecto 2 liter water container that I purchased before starting the Pacific Crest Trail. When I went to Amazon to see if I could find another 2 liter capacity bag, I don't see it online anymore, which is fine. It just means that I'm going to have to start carrying the 3 liter water capacity bag, but I really enjoyed how quickly I could collect water with this bag. For water filtration, I went with the Sawyer squeeze and this is a really popular option among through hikers and i really like how it coordinates well with the canuck vecto bag but not only that you could also use it directly onto your smart water bottle just know that if you're going to use it directly on the smart water bottle you're probably going to need to carry extra gaskets because i noticed that through hikers that do it that way have issues with the gaskets coming off not so much with the vecto I carried the Mountain Hardware Ghost Whisperer Women's Insulated Down Jacket on trail. It's 800 fill goose down, which means that it kept me incredibly warm on those freezing, freezing nights or mornings. Um, I was totally bummed when this jacket was stolen. It was in my backpack when it was taken, so I'm just going to have to purchase another one in the future or maybe even look at some cheaper alternatives, but I'm probably gonna buy this one again because it's awesome and it compacts really small and I love it. For my base layer top, I ended up going with the Women's Kapline Air Hoodie. I didn't see a lot of people using this base layer when I was doing research on what people were wearing as a base layer on the Pacific Crest Trail. But when I was on the Patagonia website, I was looking at all the specs and I thought that this might be a really good option, um, basically as a pajama. Um, it's 51% merino wool and 49% recycled polyester. So this is a blend that'll keep you really warm. It also wicks away moisture and it resists odor and it's quick dry. It's also very, very breathable. So I noticed that in sections where even the sun was out, wind was able to get through. And since it's moisture wicking, it kept me really dry all the time. And I ended up wearing this a lot on trail and not just for sleeping, but it works perfect for sleeping. I purchased the matching Kaplan Air bottoms to go with the top for my pajamas and I just wanted to quickly mention that there was one night on trail when I decided I was too tired to change into my pajamas and I just slept in what I was hiking in that day and that was a big mistake because I was really, I felt really sticky in my quilt because of all the, I guess, the sweat from hiking throughout that day and it was a really uncomfortable sleep. So this combo of the Kaplan Air tops and bottom keeps you really dry in your quilt and it keeps you really comfortable and warm. In certain sections on trail, I was wearing the women's Dynama pull-on pants made by Mountain Hardware. This was a really lightweight but moisture wicking pant and they were very very comfortable. The material was really soft to the touch and these worked really well whether it was cold out or whether it was hot. This was a really comfortable pant that I'm probably, actually I still have these, I don't need to buy them again, <laughs> but I do highly recommend them because they're very very comfortable to hike in. I wore this Mountain Hardware Summit Grid tunic hoodie a lot on the Pacific Crest Trail. It was very, very warm and I do recommend this one. Initially, when I was in the market for a mid-layer, I was looking at the Melanzana hoodies, but I couldn't find any in a color that I wanted. After leaving Big Bear, the weather started to get significantly warmer and I 
relied heavily on this combination of the Columbia Tamiami long sleeve shirt, which is SPF 40 and very, very breathable. I also really enjoyed using these shorts. Uh, it's a pair of running shorts that are also very lightweight, breathable, and quick dry. I also use these outdoor research sun gloves to protect my hands from getting burnt. And when it got even hotter than that here, like it did in the Vasquez Rocks area, I sent my pants home and I switched to a pair of biker shorts that had two pockets, um, mostly so that I could keep my cell phone in place, which was a nice change from having the looser fitting shorts and my cell phone bouncing around everywhere. So I really enjoyed switching to these. I feel like I took a major risk when I chose frog togs to be my rain suit combination, but I didn't have any issues with this rain suit. I know some people say that you shouldn't use it, but when I did use it, I felt like this kept me 100% dry, and I even started using it just as a windbreaker, so I did really enjoy this product. I started the trail with the Men's Ultra Lone Peak 6s, and if you know me in person, you know that I'm a huge fan of the Ultra shoes, and I've been buying them for years, so I definitely wanted to hike the Pacific Crest Trail in Ultras. Once I reached Wrightwood, I did uh, follow a recommendation by Blaze Physio, um, where she mentions that it might be a good idea to switch out your shoes in Wrightwood because she had noticed that a lot of people would have foot injuries around that area. It's not something you have to do, but it was a recommendation that I decided to follow and I really loved these shoes. <laughs> I'm also a really big fan of the Darn Tough socks, um, mostly because a lot of the socks come with a thin layer of cushion along the base of the feet and that makes them really, really comfortable to walk in. I've never had any issues with um, blisters using these socks. I mean, even from before I was on the Pacific Crest Trail to when I was actually on trail, not a single blister, so that was really awesome. I had a couple different designs of the socks that I thought were really fun. I especially like this Pacific Crest Trail design, so I'm probably going to buy all three of these again in the future. To protect my eyes, I just went on Amazon and purchased a really cheap pair of polarized sunglasses. Um, the idea with these glasses was that I was going to be using them through the Sierra and I wanted to protect my eyes from snow blindness if I was going to be on snow all day for a couple of days, but I ended up not doing the Sierra and ended up just using them as my regular everyday glasses, which worked out well and probably would work well in the Sierra. For my camp shoes, I went with a Teva Women's Original Universal Sandal. I also use these a lot of the time in public showers because I didn't want to go in barefoot, and these work perfectly for either a camp shoe or for a shower. I hiked with a Jansport fanny pack, which carried a lot of the little things like my ID, chapstick, pills, electrolytes, and snacks for the day. Not only that, in the main compartment, it also housed my camera gear. I carried the Sony A6400 mirrorless camera, which has 4K capabilities, and if you know how to use aperture and f-stops and things like that, you could get really great video. I also um, carried the Comica microphone, which is also a wind microphone, so it blocks the wind. And I feel like this combo was perfect for a through hiker because it's really small and it fit into the large compartment of my fanny pack. So this is definitely a camera that I recommend. This tripod is the one that I carried originally on trail. Um, it mounts both a cell phone and a point and shoot camera. It stands at 3.5 feet tall. Um, but the replacement that I purchased after I broke this one on trail stood at five feet tall And that's the only one that I could find right now on Amazon um, But it was pretty lightweight and it did compact really small and it's not for everyone But it's definitely something that I would take again with me on trail That about wraps up my through hiking gear video for 2023 and I just want to thank everybody who made it to the end of this video and stuck around to watch everything. I do have two other categories. I have the hygiene category and miscellaneous category, which will be found in the description box below. Thanks for watching.